I'm looking right at an enemy soldier. Oh, what? The six bang? Are you kidding me? Hey guys, my name is X Factor. Hopefully, you're having a great day. And here's something I haven't done a lot of in the Battlefield franchise, primarily because I'm absolutely horrible at it, but I've got to level it up, and that's being a pilot. I used to do a lot of gunning back in Battlefield 3 and previous Battlefield titles, including Battlefield 4, but not so much flying because I felt as if I was wasting the equipment that could have gone to a better player that could really help our team. Because in the Battlefield franchise, it's a lot to do with paper, rock, scissors. And if you have good air domination, then your armor most certainly can dominate because they've got to worry about armor and air and anything else on the map so i've gotten to level four which i'm going to pop in this video so i haven't done a ton of flying but most of my flying so far has been in the attack plane that allows me to have a secondary gunner which absolutely shreds other air targets can protect me in the sky and his ornaments can be dropped from various heights but it gives the enemy a little bit of time of to react and scurry away and try to mitigate some of the damage Maybe the bombs are on top of them. They can get in a trench or they can go around a tree. They have a second or so, and sometimes that allows you to survive. This is the trench fighter. Been streaming a lot. People recommending this. Never used it. First round. It is just disgusting. Death from above, death from afar, and death comes quickly because this thing recharges so fast. Not to mention, you get flares as well, which is really important when it comes to helping your team. That's probably the primary thing I need to work on first is better flare placement. I'm gonna go through the learning curve of doing this. Am I gonna become the, a good pilot? Probably not, I'll probably be below average. And I'm okay with that because That's after all, objective. I do want to get to level 10, but if I can help my team in the process, it's just like being a Enemy recon scout excited. or sniper in Battlefield 1. Even if you don't have the best shot in the world, at least get your flares to protect blind spots, getting on the actual flag being captured, defended, or more towards their spawn to give your teammates who are paying attention a little bit of a heads up and advantage. That team aspect, not to mention it rains points. Battlefield 1 rewards you tremendously for objective and class-based play, which is huge because who doesn't want 50 points or more raining in every time somebody else gets a kill? So here you see me kind of messing around with the lead of the secondary, which once I figure out is absolutely absurd. It has a very, very fast velocity and does a ton of damage. The first clip, as you can see, was an actual six bag. We lined up in the trench. We were going through the transitional period in between sectors. You knew they were coming and it was just instant. Nothing they could do about it. So my question to you guys is, since I'm not a pilot, I don't know much about all this stuff. I've died to this thing a million times. Does it need adjusting? Is this something else that needs to go in the column of things that DICE needs to take a look at? And here's another juicy spot, and I actually miss. Only get two. That could have been much more dangerous to the enemy team if I would have lined that up a little bit better. Another thing that this thing does tremendously well, lights up the Zeppelin. If you strafe it properly, if you start off with your primary, you're going to do about 70 or 80 damage until it cools down. You switch to your secondary. If you drop it lengthwise so every single shot hits, you're going to do an additional 100-some damage. That's a ton. If you think about a good AT rocket hitting the Zeppelin, maybe you're going for the gunners. That might only be three damage on the Zeppelin. Or a primary tank shell on the heavy might only be five. So what would have taken them a lifetime? You can accomplish in a couple seconds, only to circle back around and do it again. If you focus on the top gunners, you got free reign. And just like previous Battlefield titles, if it's not an enemy pilot that gets me, or AA, it's most certainly one of these guys. Treat! Don't worry, still got a triple. Don't worry, still got a triple. That's okay. That's okay. So as you can see, I have a ton of work to do. Believe it or not, there are people that are able to take out bombers with the secondary and take out other attack planes and, of course, trench fighters. Just staying in third person. It's crazy the skill gap that's out there when flying. So when I say I'm a horrible pilot, I truly mean it. Just because I'm getting a couple straight front kills because no one can touch me because I'm on defense. We're controlling our AA and they don't have an artillery truck up. 
doesn't mean I don't have a million things to work on. One thing that DICE does have to work on is the lag. There's a lot of rubber banding in Battlefield 1 when it comes to the dog fights. Now, it seems they fixed the dusting issue. What is dusting? When you hit a plane, a fast moving object with something from the ground, whether it's a field cannon or heavy tank or light tank, it seems those shots that hit do indeed blow up. That's a problem that plagued previous Battlefield titles, especially Battlefield 4 with TV missiles and a bunch of other things that could hit planes and helicopters. But there's a new problem that has to do with rubber banding and actual dog fights. And we've seen it on my stream a couple times, and this is something that is prevalent that a lot of other people more than likely have talked about and showcased. As you start strafing around, as you start doing the dance of death in the skies, you're going to notice massive jumps on the enemy plane. They might jump 50 to 100 meters in front of you. You might be on their sixth, and all of a sudden you need to recut the angle because they're completely in a different spot, which makes it really, really tricky. Now, if you've got a secondary gunner, if you've got one of the other variants, that can be life and death for you. Just as you go to line up for the kill, they automatically get better position just because of the lag compensation or the rubber banding that's going on. More than likely, DICE is aware of this issue, but it is pretty frustrating when flying, especially when somebody goes to counter you because they've died X amount of times and they just want to take you down. It's something that's very important in the Battlefield franchise to have clean dogfights. The fights actually not be dictated by the rubber banding, the lag compensation, or whatever else might be going on. This is something that didn't exist in previous Battlefield titles, so more than likely it should be a quick fix, but it also might have something to do with fixing the dusting issue. Hopefully those are two separate things, and this doesn't turn That's out to be long, drown out, big deal. So here you can see me trying to line up another strafe, kind of tipping a little bit, even picking up another kill. Need to work on those flare spots tremendously. I'm absolutely horrible about it, and I'm still trying to figure out, all right, if I pull up over the flag, where do they go? If I dive bomb in, where do they go? How far out? Does it, based on my angle of attack, my velocity, my pull out angle, what dictates where those flares go? Because that's free points. That's a great way to level up your class and help your team out in the process and just like previous battlefield titles it's about target prioritizations and levels of threat whether you're infantry armor or you're in the air know your counters do you control your aa do they take it over are they on it are they in a back aa do they have an artillery truck that really dictates what you can and cannot strafe and how aggressive you can be because these planes the trench fighter and the attack are made of paper mache aa was adjusted but if somebody's on it, if they're alert and they get on you with a medium or close proximity, you are done. Might as well simply just bail out because you're going to get shredded in a couple of seconds. Lose complete control of your aircraft. So it's important to know where the AA is. Is it destroyed or is it your AA that they're actually using? Remember, it only takes a couple strafes to kill the AA, an AT rocket some dynamite or a heavy tank taking a peek at it and shooting it once or twice that's it so if the aa is down they don't have an artillery truck you pretty much can go around unbugged bombers can't turn as quick as you the other attack craft really has to focus on you they really want to have to chase you down and they really need a secondary gunner to be able to chew you up but more than likely you can out strafe them you can out turn them and you can just get away and repair as long as your repair cycle isn't interrupted, you are free to go again because it does repair for about 30 or so. And spots like this are just oh so juicy and very hard to re resist, but be very careful. That strafe almost got me killed as I almost kissed yet another tree. And just as you think I'm starting to get used to it, I'm most certainly not. Because whenever I live stream, I have two different push to talks. C is my squad push to talk. And then V would be something like my Discord or TeamSpeak if I was on it. So a lot of times if I'm holding X to repair, I'm probably holding C at the same time and trying to have a little chat with somebody else. And just like that, they get on me with the AA from afar. So we need to retreat and repair or so you think. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you soon. Shit!
That didn't have I'll edit that out. That's okay. That's okay. 